hemodynamics. What's up, gang? Professor Brown here, and we're going to be doing some hemodynamics homework problems. So let's work them along with me and see if we can't learn a thing or two. So our first homework problem here is about Romeo and Juliet. Apparently, at rest, Juliet's heart rate is 72 beats per minute, and her cardiac output is 5 liters per minute. But when she sees Romeo, her heart rate plunges upward into 120 beats per minute, and her cardiac output jumps to 15 liters per minute. So we're tasked with calculating her stroke volume both before and after she sees Romeo. So we're going to jump over to my paint program and work these problems out the old-fashioned way, by hand, on a digital stylus on a PC. It's old-fashioned enough. Be right back. And we're back. So here we have our blank drawing canvas. So let's recall first the equation we're going to need to solve this problem. So we're going to use our old cardiac output equation. And that is that cardiac output is equal to heart rate times stroke volume. All right. I apologize for my handwriting, but this is the best way to do it. So I'm going to do my best and you guys just bear with me. All right. So at first, Juliet's heart rate was 72 beats per minute and her cardiac output was five liters per minute. So what we need to do is find stroke volume. So we need to solve this equation for stroke volume, which is gonna be equal to cardiac output divided by heart rate. So before she saw her boy Romeo, her cardiac output was five liters per minute and her heart rate was 72 beats per minute, and that's going to work out to 0 0.069. Notice um, our minutes are going to cancel out, and we end up with liters per beat, which we know is the right unit because stroke volume is the volume ejected by the ventricles of the heart every time they beat. All right, after she sees Romeo, her cardiac output jumped up to 15 liters per minute, and her heart rate was 120 beats per minute. And that's going to work itself out too, if I can make my calculator work, because this is not, you don't want to watch me do the math longhand. That's going to come out to being equal to 0 0.12 five liters per beat. All right, so I'm gonna peace out on over to our problem set and let's look at our next problem. Okay, gang, our next problem is all about one of my childhood heroes, Mr. T. And this has actually got some uh, several different parts to it. The first thing is we're gonna be calculating the mean arterial pressure of Mr. T. So once again, let's hop back over into the paint program and calculate mean arterial pressure of somebody with a blood pressure of 120 over 80. Be right back. And we're back and we are going to calculate Mr. T's mean arterial pressure. So like we did last time, let's recall the equation we're gonna need. So mean arterial pressure is equal to the diastolic pressure. So pressure P sub D plus the pulse pressure, which is systolic pressure minus diastolic pressure divided by three. So we will recall that Mr. T's blood pressure was 120 over 80. So this diastolic pressure here is gonna go here. So we'll set this up with 80 plus the pulse pressure will be 120 minus 80 and the whole thing is divided by three. Now, you know order of operations. So the first thing we gotta do is whatever's in parentheses. So let's do that right over here. 120 minus 80 is 40. Then, of course, you do division before you do addition. So 40 divided by 3 is going to equal 13.3. And now we can come back and add that to 80. And that's going to give us, so we'll write this out for us, 80 plus 40 over 3. That's going to give us then 80 plus 13.3. And so finally, we end up with Mr. T's mean arterial pressure being 93.3. And the units for MAP is millimeters of mercury. All right, so we're gonna pop back on over into the PowerPoint and look at the next part of this problem. And we're back. 
So we calculated MAP from his blood pressure, from his systolic and diastolic pressure readings, and now that we know his mean arterial pressure, and um, we've been given his cardiac output here at 5 liters per minute, we should be able to calculate peripheral resistance. So let's jet back on over into the drawing program and calculate it out. And we're back. So in the last problem set, we learned that Mr. T's mean arterial pressure is 93.3 millimeters of mercury. So we're going to need a new equation here. So there were two ways to calculate mean arterial pressure. The first was the equation we used to get this number. Uh, the next was that mean arterial pressure is equal to cardiac output times peripheral resistance. And our task now is to calculate peripheral resistance. So we need to rearrange this equation to solve for peripheral resistance. That's going to be MAP divided by CO, which is going to equal 93.3 millimeters of mercury divided by the cardiac output, which was 5 and that was in liters per minute. So that's going to give us a value of 18.66. So this is going to be 18.66. And the unit here is a little weird. It's millimeters of mercury per liter per minute. OK, so that's calculating peripheral resistance. We've calculated MAP. Now let's go see what the last part of our problem set is asking us to do. And in the last bit, it's gonna, we're going to go back and recalculate MAP using the same CO, but assuming that his PR rises to 25 millimeters of mercury per liter per minute as a consequence of him pitying fools. So let's go back and calculate this out. Okay, so to solve this one, we're going to go back to our equation of... Uh-oh, that's what happens when you're trying to do this in real time. So we're going to go back to our equation of MAP is equal to cardiac output times peripheral resistance. Learn to draw the things there, Professor Brown. Let's try this one more time. MAP times peripheral resistance. Much better. Okay, so in this case, we're solving for mean arterial pressure. We're assuming his cardiac, cardiac output stays the same at 5 liters per minute. Um, but we are going to then multiply this by an increased peripheral resistance of 25 millimeters of mercury per liter per minute. So this is real easy. 5 times 25 is 125. And liters per minute will cancel out, and we end up with the proper unit for mean arterial pressure, which is millimeters of mercury. Okay, so that's it for uh, problem set number two. So we're going to go last on to the really challenging one. And I like this one because it's all about me. Be right back. And we're back. Sorry, I stole that from Slip Gator. He's one of my favorite YouTubers. Sorry, Slip. All right. So now there's my lovely face wearing my sweet, sweet mustache. And we have a very hypothetical situation, which is I get totally ripped and decide to try out for a triathlon. So I do a bunch of testing down in the exercise phys labs, and these are the results we get. So we're asked to calculate several things for me. Uh, my stroke volume, my mean arterial pressure, cardiac output, and my peripheral resistance. So we're going to go take these one at a time. So let's go over to our drawing program and get this done. Okay, I'm back. And first thing we have to do is calculate stroke volume. And this is really weird because we're going to be doing something we've never done before, and that is using our ventricular end volumes. So we said in the problem statement, I don't know if you saw it or not, but we had an end diastolic volume of 160 milliliters. So our volume diastolic was 160 milliliters. In our end systolic volume, so when the ventricles are the smallest, they've ejected all the blood they can eject, we end up with a volume of 50 milliliters. So to find stroke volume, right, stroke volume is the amount of blood pumped out by the ventricles per beat. So if they're 160 mils when they're full and 50 mils when they're empty, then our stroke volume is just going to be the difference of these two. So it's going to be 160 minus 50, which is going to give us if I'm doing my math correctly, 110 milliliters. 
This is milliliters. Now we measured stroke volume in liters. So what we need to do is move this decimal place one, two, three spots to go from milliliters to liters. So our stroke volume is going to be 0 0.11 liters per beat. Okay, so the next thing we have to calculate is MAP. That shouldn't be very hard now, should it? Oh, I changed my pen size to much, much, much bigger. There we go. So now we got to calculate MAP. So let me go over here and draw a line here, and we're going to go down. So we're going to be using the old MAP equals diastolic pressure plus pulse pressure. There we go, divided by three. And in the problem statement, I said that regular, my blood pressure readings were 135 over 78. So that was 135 over 78. So the 78 is my diastolic, the 135 is my systolic. So we go over here and set this up. This is gonna be equal to 78 plus 135 minus 78 divided by three which is going to be, let's see, 135 minus 78 is 57. So that's 78 plus 57 over 3. I'm going down to the bottom of my writing tablet. <laughs> it's getting harder. <laughs> All right, so that gives us 78 plus 57 divided by 3 is 19. And so that's going to give us a total of 97. So my mean arterial pressure is going to be 97 millimeters of mercury. Okay, the next part of that was to calculate my cardiac output. So let's go ahead and erase, let's erase this layer and move to this layer. So we got to calculate cardiac output. So we know that cardiac output is equal to stroke volume times heart rate or heart rate times stroke volume. It would be the same thing. We just calculated my stroke volume as, let's go back to that layer, Stroke volume was 0.11 liters per beat. So let's make that go away. So stroke volume is 0 0.11 liters per beat. And we said in the problem statement that heart rate was 140 beats per minute. Of course, our beats are gonna cancel out and our cardiac output is gonna be equal to 0 0.11 times 140 and that is 15.4 liters per minute. And then the last thing we had to calculate is peripheral resistance. So we learned in our last one, let me make this go away and show us this one, that our mean arterial pressure was 97 millimeters of mercury. And if you have mean arterial pressure and cardiac output, you can figure out peripheral resistance. So what was that again? 97 millimeters of mercury, okay? so. We're going to be using MAP equals CO times peripheral resistance. This was 97 millimeters of mercury. It's going to be equal to 15.4 liters per minute times PR. Solving for PR means we divide each side by 15.4. liters per minute. So let's just kind of erase this business right here. And that's going to give us a value of 97 divided by 15.4 equals 6.298, so 6.3. So we're gonna have a peripheral resistance of 6.3 millimeters of mercury per liter per minute. All right, gang. Well, that's going to be it for me. This video's already gone 15 minutes. I hope that helps. As always, you can message me if you need any more help. So thanks for being with me. As always, this is Dr. Brown. We'll see you later, peeps.